Hello friends, in today's video, we shall see the properties of indirect utility function. The first property of indirect utility function is that indirect utility function is a homogeneous function of degree 0. So a homogeneous function of degree 0 means that if the prices of all the goods and consumers income are increased by the same proportion, say by k, then the budget constraint will be unaffected. Say for example, suppose the price of one unit of good X is rupees 5 and consumer's income is rupees 10. So with this income and with the price of good X, the consumer will purchase two units of good X. Now suppose the consumer's income and price of good X is doubled. Then the price of good X becomes rupees 10 and consumer's income becomes rupees 20. Whereas the consumer will be purchasing the same two units of good X itself at this new price and new income. So here, even though the price price of goods and consumer's income has increased by the same proportion, the consumer's purchasing power remains the same. That is why the consumer is able to purchase the same amount of product only at the new prices and income. In short, we can say that there is no money illusion. So, if the indirect utility function v of px py m is equal to m square divided by 4 px py is multiplied by a constant alpha, then we can write it as v of px py m is equal to alpha m the whole square divided by alpha multiplied by 4 px py. Solving this, we get alpha m the whole square divided by 4 alpha px multiplied by alpha py. Now, opening the brackets and separating the alpha, we get alpha square divided by alpha raised to 1 multiplied by alpha raised to 1 multiplied by m square divided by 4 px py. Now here alpha raised to 1 multiplied by alpha raised to 1 will be alpha square. So here alpha square and alpha square will get cancelled out and so we get m square divided by 4 px py which is the indirect utility function itself. Now this can be solved in another way as well that is after getting the equation alpha square divided by alpha square multiplied by m square divided by 4 px py if we take up the alpha square in the denominator onto the numerator the alpha square in the denominator will become alpha raised to minus 2 when we put up in the numerator so we get alpha raised to 2 minus 2 multiplied by m square divided by 4 px py so this is alpha raised to 0 2 minus 2 is 0 any number raised to 0 is 1 so again we get m square divided by 4 px py which is the indirect utility function itself now the second property is indirect utility function is an increasing function of income. Now this means that when consumer's income increases, consumer's utility also increases. Now to solve that indirect utility function is an increasing function of income, we will take the indirect utility function V is equal to U X1 of P1 M and X2 P2 M and find the derivative of the above function with respect to income using chain rule. So in this property we are talking about indirect utility function being an increasing function of income. So that is why we are differentiating the indirect utility function with respect to income using chain rule and we get the equation del v by del m is equal to del u by del x1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus del u by del x2 multiplied by del x2 by del m. So in the first order conditions of the utility maximization using Lagrangian multiplier we get del u by del x1 is equal to lambda p1 and del u by del x2 is equal to lambda p2. So here we are substituting the above terms onto this equation del v by del m is equal to del u by del x1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus del u by del x2 multiplied by del x2 by del m and we get del v by del m is equal to lambda p1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus lambda p2 multiplied by del x2 by del m. Here lambda is common so we take lambda out and we get del v by del m is equal to lambda multiplied by p1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del m. Now again differentiating the budget constraint m is equal to p1 x1 plus p2 x2 with respect to m keeping the prices constant we get del m by del m is equal to p1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del m. Del m by del m is equal to 1. So this equation can be rewritten as 1 is equal to p1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus p2 multiplied by 
del x2 by del m. So here we can see that the term in the brackets of the equation that we received earlier that is del v by del m is equal to lambda multiplied by the term in brackets. That is same as that in the above equation where the budget constraint was differentiated with respect to income. So substituting 1 is equal to p1 multiplied by del x1 by del m plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del m onto the equation del v by del m we get del v by del m is equal to lambda and here lambda is a positive value and is also greater than 0 which shows that increase in income leads to increase in utility and it will always be non-decreasing it means that when income increases consumers utility will always be increasing it will never be decreasing the third property is indirect utility function is a decreasing function of prices now this means that when the prices of the goods increases consumers utility decreases now this function can also be proved for which the utility function must be differentiated with respect to price of x1 using chain rule and from differentiation we get del v by del p1 is equal to del u by del x1 multiplied by del x1 by del p1 plus del u by del x2 multiplied by del x2 by del p1 now according to the first order conditions of utility maximization using lagrangian multiplier we get the terms del u by del x1 is equal to lambda p1 and del u by del x2 is equal to lambda p2 so substituting these equations onto the equation del v by del p1 we get del v by del p1 is equal to lambda p1 multiplied by del x1 by del p1 plus lambda p2 multiplied by del x2 by del p1 now factoring out the lambda we get del v by del p1 is equal to lambda multiplied by p1 multiplied by del x1 by del p1 plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del p1 now differentiating the budget constraint m is equal to p1 x1 plus p2 x2 with respect to p1 that is prices of good 1 using product rule of differentiation we get del m by del p1 is equal to x1 multiplied by del p1 by del p1 plus p1 multiplied by del x1 by del p1 plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del p1 here in the place of u v in the product rule we have taken p1 x1 and have derived at this equation now here del p1 and del p1 gets cancelled out and we can rewrite this equation as del m by del p1 is equal to x1 plus p1 multiplied by del x1 by del p1 plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del p1 here del m by del p1 is equated to 0 and we bring the x1 in the rhs onto the lhs and we can rewrite the equation as minus x1 is equal to p1 multiplied by del x1 by del p1 plus p2 multiplied by del x2 by del p1 now substituting this equation onto the equation del v by del p1 where the equation in the bracket is similar to the one given as negative x1 we get del v by del p1 is equal to minus lambda x1 similarly if we differentiate the indirect utility function and the budget constraint with respect to price of x2 that is p2 and solve in the similar manner we will get del v by del p2 is equal to minus lambda x2 here lambda is negative which shows that an increase in the price of good will lead to decrease in the utility of the consumer and it will always be non-increasing it means that whenever the price of goods increases consumers utility will always decrease the fourth property of indirect utility function is that it is quasi convex in prices it means that the linear combinations of the prices of any two bundles of goods on an indirect indifference curves will yield a lower utility so what do you mean by an indirect indifference curve an indirect indifference curve shows the various combinations of prices of the goods on its axis so in the x axis and y axis we can see that the prices of good x1 and x2 has been represented now we had already seen that indirect utility function is a decreasing function of prices so therefore the lower the indirect indifference curve the higher the utility it means a lower indirect indifference curve represents low prices of both the goods and if the prices are low then the utility of the consumer will be high and vice versa so a lower indirect indifference curve represents higher utility whereas a higher indirect indifference curve represents lower utility meaning as the indifference curve shifts upwards it means that the prices of both the goods are increasing which decreases the utility of the consumer so hence higher the indirect indifference curve lower the utility of the consumer the next property is monotonicity it means the consumer always prefer larger bundles to smaller bundles of goods the last and one of the most important property is the roy's identity now roy's identity is actually a formula used to derive the marshallian 
demand function for good x or y directly from the indirect utility function. So it can be represented as x m i that is a Marshallian demand for good x i. It can be x1 or x2 that is equal to minus the partial derivative of indirect utility by the partial derivative of price of good x i. The whole divided by the partial derivative of indirect utility divided by the partial derivative of consumer's income. Now this can be denoted symbolically as minus del v by del p i the whole divided by del v by del m. So in the second property of indirect utility function that is it is an increasing function in income we derived del v by del m is equal to lambda lambda being a positive value and similarly the property 3 of indirect utility function that is it is decreasing in prices we derived that del v by del p 1 is equal to minus lambda x 1 where lambda is negative. So substituting these terms onto the Roy's identity we get x m 1 that is a Marshallian demand for good x 1 is equal to minus lambda x 1 divided by lambda. Here lambda will get cancelled out and we get minus x1 as the final answer. It means the ratio of the partial derivatives of the indirect utility function with respect to price of a good and consumer's income is equal to the Marshallian demand function which is a negative value. If you like the video, do subscribe to my channel and share the videos to maximum. Thank you.